Good evening, and welcome to Decades of the Century. On tonight's program, we will be discussing some of the people, events, and technology that came together to create one of the most influential decades in Canadian history. I'm Daisy Gallagher, and welcome to the 1980s. Here are some of the gnarly events that took place in this fresh decade. On May 20, 1980, a referendum was held in Quebec under the Parti Québécois government. Its purpose was to ask the people of Quebec for support to begin negotiation with the rest of Canada and move towards sovereignty. Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau spoke powerfully in front of a large crowd in Montreal to persuade Quebec citizens to reject the proposal. The referendum resulted in a very close vote, with 59% voting to keep Quebec a part of Canada and 40% voting for separatism. The Constitution Act of 1982 brought about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and allowed Canada to amend its own constitution without the approval of Britain. Pierre Trudeau began the process of gaining this independence following the Quebec referendum in 1980. The procedure put in place to ensure fair and proper changes made to the constitution is called the Amending Formula, which required 7 of the 10 provinces approval with permission and support from at least 50% of citizens. In 1981, Quebec rejected the changes made by Pierre Trudeau to the Constitution. In an attempt to gain their consent, federal and provincial governments met and developed the Meech Lake Accord. Its aim was to amend the Constitution by strengthening provincial powers and declaring Quebec a distinct society. With the election of the Progressive Conservative Party and Premier Robert Bourassa, Quebec reopened the floor for constitutional discussion in 1987. The accord lost its public appeal soon after when it was criticized for weakening federal power and being a result of backroom political negotiation. From October 14th to October 19th, 1987, major world markets plummeted, causing wide losses in stock value and the end of a five-year period of stock market success. October 19th was known as Black Monday as this was the worst day of the crash. Unlike the crash in 1929, however, the world quickly recovered, regaining all lost value in just two years. Let's look at some of the awesome dudes and dudettes that made this decade, like, totally tubular. Born on October 18, 1919, Pierre Trudeau was the leader of the Liberal Party and Prime Minister from years 1968 to 1984. He gained much popularity during these 16 years as Prime Minister, not only for his charisma and signature red rose, but for the immense and powerful changes he brought to Canadian people. He brought about the Official Languages Act in 1969, the Canadian Charter of Rights in 1982, and the appointment of the first woman Governor General in 1984. Martin Brian Mulroney was Prime Minister of Canada from 1984 to 1993 and the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party. In the 1984 election, he ran an almost flawless campaign, winning 211 seats, a record number in Canadian history. His efforts as Prime Minister included the Free Trade Agreement between the US and Canada, the Meech Lake Accord, and the Charlottetown Accord. Lee Chi Su, a Hong Kong-born Canadian genealogist, was instrumental in the treatment and diagnosis of cystic fibrosis during the 1980s. After 10 years of research, his project helped many Canadians. Lien Benoit was a key figure in the treatment and research of Parkinson's disease in this decade. Finally, John Charles Polanyi, a Canadian scientist, made Canadian history in 1986 when he won a Nobel Prize for Chemistry, following years of incredible and thorough scientific research. Canadian artists also thrived during this decade, and many were recognized on a global scale. Celine Dion, a Quebec-born vocal phenomenon, made her breakthrough in 1980 at just 12 years old. Robert Bateman, an artist acclaimed for his realistic Canadian subject artwork, won countless awards for his paintings during the 1980s. Donald Sutherland also made a splash in film as a Canadian actor, starring in major films like Ordinary People and Revolution. This is some of the new totally rad technology that really made me want to dance with somebody. The Canadarm was one of Canada's most notable technological advances. Debuting in 1981, the robotic arm was a product of years of research and study and began Canada's close collaboration with NASA. The arm itself was 15 meters long and was used to deploy and maneuver equipment in space. 
Louise Brown, the world's first successful product of in vitro fertilization, or the world's first test tube baby, was born on July 25, 1978. Dr. Patrick Steptoe and Dr. Robert Edwards had been researching alternative means of conception for 12 years with very few successes and without a pregnancy lasting more than a few weeks. Louise's birth inspired hope for scientists and for mothers around the world throughout the 80s and to this day. The Challenger Jet, also known as the Canadair Challenger, was designed by Bill Lear in the late 1970s. The jet was a wide-body business jet with an expanded fuselage and the ability to carry from 14 to 18 passengers. Its first test flight took place in 1978 and gained certification in 1980. That's all for today, folks. Join us next time on Decades of the Century.